Hello artists, welcome to Mrs. Austin's Kitchen. So today we are going to be making salt dough. So you are going to need a few ingredients for this project. You are going to need salt. I have just Wegmans iodized salt. You also will need flour. Today I'm using all purpose bleach white flour. I have also though seen people use whole wheat flour. And I haven't tried it myself yet, but there is also an organic coconut flour that is gluten-free if we have any friends with gluten allergies. So all of these are options that you can get at the store to use with your salt. And then you will need just a little bit of water from the sink. So I have three fourths cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and then I used a one cup measuring cup to pour just a little bit of water in. I don't have a lot in there yet. Um, we want to pour in the water gradually, which means slowly, so that we aren't making our salt dough too sticky. First thing I'm going to do before I start mixing though, I'm going to roll my sleeves up. I suggest you do the same. Mrs. Austin also is not wearing a smock because she's used to getting messy. If you don't want to get messy, make sure your smock is on. I'm now going to have a wooden spoon and a bowl, and I'm going to start pouring my ingredients into the bowl. So I'm gonna put my dry ingredients in first. So I dropped in my flour, and now I'm dropping in the salt. And I'm gonna stir that just a little bit. And then I'm going to gradually start adding the water in. And I might need to run to the sink, which is right behind me, and get some more water, depending on how my consistency is. So we want it to be kind of thick and chunky, like if you've ever made cookies before, kind of like cookie dough. Um, or another example would be more of like a Play-Doh type consistency. So you can see mine is not really sticking together very well yet, very crumbly. So that means I need to add a little bit more water. So I'm gonna do that now. And again, I'm just doing little by little because it's easier to add more than to have too much. If you do end up getting too much and it is too sticky, then you just need to sprinkle in some more flour and salt into your bowl to kind of thicken it back up again. So I can see that I need a teeny bit more water. So I'm gonna go grab some from the sink. Be right back. All right. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water in just a teeny bit. I don't wanna to do too much because again, it will all stick to my finger. So you can kind of see that it's sticking a little bit better right now. So this is a pretty good consistency. So I'm going to now pull it out, make it into a ball, and I have some clay now dough. Again, you can see it's not really coming off on my hands and sticking too much. You can see a teeny bit. So maybe I would sprinkle like a little bit more flour. So I'm gonna sprinkle, you can see on my other screen here, a little flour onto here, just to make it a little bit less sticky because we don't want it to be sticking all over the place. There we go, that's a little bit better. So you can see it's kind of like Play-Doh where you can push into it and it doesn't really come off. So I hope that you have fun sculpting today. I can't wait to see what you create and have fun. Good luck artists. All right, artists, so now I have my salt dough done. This is actually quite a lot, so I'm not gonna use all of this for my parrot today. So I'm gonna break it into half, and then actually I'm even gonna break a little bit of that off. Um, I just don't want my figure too big. It's completely up to you what size you would like yours to be. So I'm doing what's calling, called kneading um, the dough just a little bit to kind of mush it all together. And I'm gonna start shaping the body for my parrot, so it's kind of more of an oval. And I looked up some reference photos before I started this so that I could look at some images of the parrot. Now I have a little bit of water in this measuring cup here. I'm just gonna dip my finger in and I'm only gonna rub a teeny bit, but wherever there's like a really big crack, you can smooth it out a little bit with the water. You don't wanna do too much because your salt dough will start getting like uh, sticky again. And then you'll need to add flour to it, which we don't wanna do. So I've got my body that I'm envisioning made there. Now the tricky part is going to be making sure that the head is a good size in comparison to the body because I don't want to have a huge head on my ferret or a small head. So I'm going to roll the dough between my hands a little bit. You can see I got a pretty good sized crack, but what I can do to problem solve that is that's going to be the side that I stick down on my um, parrot here. So what you're going to do is you can use a fork 
or I have a toothpick here, whatever works for you. And you're gonna make some teeny little scratches and you don't wanna like drag too much. I am almost actually like poking and dragging a little bit just so that it roughens up the edge of the surface. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the part of the head where I'm gonna connect my parrot together. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of water and tap it. I don't wanna smooth it because it'll smooth out the scratches I just made. So I'm just gonna tap it on one side and then I'm gonna connect the pieces together. So this should help lock them in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda use my finger to smooth that connection a little bit so there's not a huge break there. And also that will also um, hold the head on a lot tighter so that it won't fall off during the drying process. So, all right. Got that part mean. I'm gonna start my beak here a little bit. So I'm actually just gonna pinch the dough to start forming a beak instead of actually shaping a triangle and connecting it. Because I think personally, the less connections you have sometimes, the better, because it'll stay together a little bit more. And I'm gonna kind of flare out the back of my parrot a little bit here. Give him a little bit of a tail. And you can even take the fork or the toothpick if you have one and use that to smooth if that's easier for you than your fingers. It's really up to you and what you're most comfortable with and also the kind of animal you're, that you're making today it might make a difference on what process you want to use. So instead of attaching wings onto the side, I'm actually going to draw my wings in. So I'm just very slowly dragging with the toothpick and you can see sometimes I'm going back and forth to create those lines. It's not always just dragging in one direction. That is best. And then I'm gonna go to my other side. And I'm, you'll notice too, my fingers are very loose in this process of the hand that's holding my parrot. That's so that I'm not squishing the progress that I've already made and denting it um, and having to fix things and redo them. Okay, so I think I've got my uh, wings in there. To me, it's looking a little bit like a penguin right now. So hopefully once I paint it, it'll look a little better. I'm gonna kinda draw in some eyes here. And I'm gonna also add a little detail to the beak and the nostrils on my bird. And then if I really want to, I can go into drawing some lines. I wouldn't do too many because you don't want it to get um, too pulled apart. This is very delicate. Um, and then I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dip my salt out here in a little bit of water because it got a little dry while I was working here. And I can tell that because it's really crumbly instead of sticking together. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of almost make a heart shape for the base of my bird. And it's gonna look like my parrot's feet are sticking out a little bit. So I've got that. Make some little indentations on here with my fork. And same thing for the bottom of my carrot. Again, just tapping a little bit of water on there. I'm gonna attach this here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap it very lightly on the countertop. So you can see I'm not mashing it. So I can get some pieces there. And this will help hold it up. If you have an animal that's standing up on legs, what you might need to do is put something under it to support it. And you can see here, look, I squished with my fingers a little too roughly and I dented my wings. I kind of blended them in more than I wanted. There we go. So my bird seems to be standing pretty okay now, but to be honest, I might find something around the house to set right here in front of him under his beak like this just to give them a little bit of security for it to dry. And then I'm gonna leave this for a minimum of overnight to dry. So you're gonna wanna make sure it's in a place where no little brothers or sisters can get their hands on it. Also no dogs or cats or any other animals can get hair stuck in it, like in my house, cause I have three dogs, um, or uh, eat it 
because it would taste gross. So this is actually how much salt do I have left over. So if I wanted to make another animal figure right now, I definitely could. Or what you can do is you can put any excess that you have left over into a baggie and save it for another time. So I hope you had fun, artists. Here is my little parrot. And then next week we will be painting. See you later.